they may be very comfortable to be with someone who's like them. And they like that, and, and they're drawn to that initially. But after a while, you start to wear yourself down, if you know what I'm saying. Right. When that person's just like you, it's <laughs> like, oh, my you goodness. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you have enough of yourself to deal with, now you got to deal with them, too, and just like you. So I, I'm, I believe it's better when we do have to have some of the same values. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think, in general, some of the same goals. So I think, it, like, we both have to want to be successful. Like, we, we have to both have some level of ambition. If they're not ambitious and we are, that's going to be conflicting. So there's certain things that will conflict if they're not the same mm -hmm. or at least somewhere similar. But we, sh we do a lot better when there's balance and when they have certain strengths that we don't have and we're not exactly the same, but we respect each other's differences to where we complement each other. Right. Should I just tell him that he's right? Or <laughs> 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 Sounds good to me. <laughs> no, I mean, and that's, and that's in, in essence what it says. You know, people would expect to say, well, if you've got all these things in common, that's going to determine, you know, the relationship. Now, that certainly helps in a lot of ways because if you, it, it allows the couple to have a common vision and to a lot easier than it would be if, if they had varying, you know, extreme differences. Um, so it's certainly, according to the study, is better for the couple to have um, some things in common as opposed to just being, you know, totally opposite in everything. So, like, for example, we, we take politics. You may have somebody who's extremely conservative and somebody who's extremely liberal. And, uh, and those two ends um, could be very difficult to get along. However, it's not impossible. There are just things that um, couples have to really determine what's, what are the um, factors that are most important in this relationship? What are the deal breakers? And, and, and that is essentially what they're saying here is, sure, there are certain things that people can have in common that go, you know, that work together really well together, but there are some things that people can have differences about, but if they are not those deal breakers, they're not those things that are at the core of who you are, um, it's not going to have as um, a detrimental impact pack on the relationship or it doesn't have to. So so we're going to go to break, but when we come back, now I'm going to let you all have your say <laughs> on this, um, on the live exchange. <laughs> uh, you are clear. Okay. Whew. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it said. <laughs> With a lot of scholarly technical terms, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to log out of here. So you can share it, uh, Pam. Sorry. Oh, so wait. What? How do I? What do I do? I'm gonna because your phone's up there, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this phone. Oh. Okay. And have you um, log, log in. in. Okay. So you can share. Got it. Hold on. We've got a whole lot of um, comments. Okay. Yeah, you got some comments. That we have ladies in. saying hello to each other. <laughs> hey, Jill. Hey, girl. <laughs> um, yeah, we're talking about Jill. Um, so, on certification program with courses in health and wellness heads, coaching, spiritual love the coaching, relationship coaching, coaching okay. executive so, coaching, coaching, life coaching, 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 and cultural competency <laughs> coaching. Courses are um, online, public, well, or face to face. I the think Academy your advice can come from some places. Is empowering coaching I don't to empower the world. Um, Make what is the right way to handle things? In yourself. What should I do? Or what do I Go want to do? Go to the Academy of Coaching and Counseling. People are always looking to invest in a good opportunity. So what if you can invest in the future of kids? That, that, that definitely can work into a challenge. Not the kind of stock that's about making money. Sometimes but a stock for social change. You gotta take cause better futures. Certain situations you, you gotta investing. take emotions out of it because like emotions change. Out. And if you're making My name is foundational in decisions, time, you're giving it. Putting some shaky ground, yeah. which, which yeah. to me is emotional. Yeah. 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 Our mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say it can be, but it can be a challenge. You'll find it turning into being a challenge because when you made the decision, you made it emotionally. Later on, you don't feel that way anymore. So now you're at a point, place where. Yeah. Oh, women do. That's relationship all the time. Oh. Log in, you can share it through uh, the station station. Mm -hmm. And okay. the head coach, Tony Dungeon. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired. I told her what I was disappointed. That's that right there. Next year, now, when she don't feel that way, she'll do it. She <coughs> won't help to forgive her. For the next I'll say it all. It's like that. Right. Okay. <laughs> You should know, right? Isn't that the saying? Do you know me? No. 
Emotionally driven is not the same as um, listening to your intuition or listening to your gut. All right, to me, that's a that's something different. I'm saying when you're being driven by excitement, anger, sadness, these things can completely change how you view a situation and how you handle it, and can completely derail it if you don't have that intelligence of knowing one how to reel yourself back in, right. how to separate yourself from those emotions at that moment. And really make sure you're making sound decisions. And so, yes, there's a lot of people who get into the wrong relationship because they're caught up off the hype. And they're just excited and they have this fantasy, but they're not really processing what's going on here. Because I guess what? When they come to me or they come to jail or any coach and you speak to them, you find out you saw the signs from the beginning. But your Maybe. emotions got in the way. They saw issues and red flags, but that lack of emotional intelligence, that lack of emotional um, health, hmm. even more so, um, a lot of times just puts them on the wrong path and sets them up for the bad relationship. And can, and can I add one more thing yeah. on top of that? And this might be a little... We won't use the word crab, but sometimes <laughs> so, we, we might, right? So sometimes that thirstiness, right? So just wanting something so bad mm -hmm. that even though every fiber in my being knows this is not good for me, this is not what I want, but I just want a man. I just want something, right? I'll do anything to try to make that happen. And I think that if you could separate yourself from that a little bit just to say, okay, what do I really want? in my life? What what specific things do I want? Three specific things. And if this guy doesn't meet those three specific things, I need to move on and find the right one. Yeah. So That's interesting. My, my cousin slash business partner slash co-author <laughs> <laughs> says that a lot. What are your top three? Think about what your top three are. And those are two, three things that can't be negotiated. That's just, you know, what it is you know, take it or leave it. Um, one of the things that this whole making it happen thing, you want something so bad. Um, I've talked about this. Um, I have a, a, a blog um, called The Hopeful Romantic. <laughs> um, and I've talked about, we are hustlers these days, women. You know, we, so we are, um, and I think I talked about this with um, Jay um, uh, last time he was on the show, but we're the first generation of women or people in general who are, um, divorce is, is okay, this is what we do. Um, in the past, we kept things quiet, or our parents did, kept things quiet, and they did not put it all out there, and they did not divorce. And if, so, you know, if Dad, Papa was a Rolling Stone, Papa was a Rolling Stone, we didn't leave Papa, you know? And so now, not only do we, are we okay with, you know, divorcing, leaving, 
Um, but we're we're doing our careers on our own, and we're doing all this. So we're used to making things happen. So we're used to being hustling, hustlers. And so one of the things I like to challenge women to do is to flow. Sometimes just to sit back, relax, and flow. You know, hustle then flow. Um, is, is <laughs> the name of the article. But um, but but I just so I think it just made me think of that. You know, when you all said it. So we're, one of the things that we're doing now in our forties. Are, we're, we're marrying people who are divorced, who've gone through ch child custody battles, who um, maybe the women haven't had any babies yet, and they're like, I gotta have a baby. So there's a lot of intensity of dating that's happening now at this day and age. And so I'm throwing all that out there. I, I, want, I would love to hear you know, your thoughts on all of that. I, I, I personally think that that adds a whole nother dynamic. If you don't have uh, a hold of or a good grasp on things that you haven't achieved yet in your later years, mm -hmm. like, okay, then you'll start putting pressure in areas. So you, it's like, you know, you might have your hand on a man's back <laughs> when y'all walk in together. Where his hand but should be you, on the small of your back, actually, you know. Well, you know, y'all have your arms around <laughs> but each no, other. No, 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 but you I hear you. You have your arms around but each other. Because I'm, I'm, I'm making a point. She right. may start pushing uh -huh. to where she thinks she's just still walking. Right. But she wants to get to that next stop uh, 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 of, of uh, career success or, or family success. She wants to get to that next point. Right. Um, so she's walking faster than she thinks she's walking. You, you kind of understand <laughs> what I mean. And can't understand so, why he's not keeping up. <laughs> right. Like, so, so now he's like, oh, why don't you what, slow down? We, we're going to get there. Yeah. That's what, so when you said the flow part, mm -hmm. that's the... That's the, if you don't have a good grasp on, hey, I haven't had a baby yet, but if God told me it's coming, it's coming. Mm -hmm. You got to be there. If I'm supposed to be on this level of my life, but I'm not there yet, but God told me I'm going to get there, you still got to put, you got to put that confidence in your mind that you're going to get there mm -hmm. and not be, and not be the person that's, you try to take it into your home and become a, and try to make something out of nothing where there is something there. You don't have to make something out of nothing. Right. It's there. You just got to let it manifest. Right. right. That's good. That's good. Okay, well, we're going to get right into the balance challenge. All right. <laughs> okay, so so this week's balance challenge is um, it's, it's totally off the cuff because it wasn't what I was going to give you guys, but um, Stefan mentioned emotional intelligence. <laughs> and I think that, that is, is so it for good. today. Yes. Yes. I think that's is really the word good. for today. Yeah. So uh, I, I challenge you all to take a, um, an inventory of your own emotional intelligence. And what that means is, is really understanding how your emotions come in, into play in a way that either benefits or hinders you. So, um, you know, our emotions are great in some ways. They're terrible in other ways. So we have fear. For example, fear is important when it comes to protecting ourselves. And, you know, if you're, you're walking in the middle of the street and a car is coming, fear is going to tell you, get out of the street, right? Um, however, if you're in a relationship in which you've, ex in, and in the past you've experienced a whole lot of trauma and you are wrought with fear throughout the course of the relationship, that's an emotion that's not healthy, that's not going to help you because it's not an emotion that's trying to save your um, life from immediate death. It's an emotion that's reflecting back on what's happened in the past. And so it's really important for us to take an inventory and think about how our emotions are impacting the relationships that we have today. Um, what do you all, do you have anything to add for people? This is your challenge for the week, y'all. For the week, I want you to take an inventory. So I'll offer that the emotional intelligence is incredibly important to, to be aware of where your emotions lie, right? So if you're if you're in a relationship, or, or, or let's step back, let's say you want to get in a relationship and you really want something really bad, I think you still have to step back and peel back the onion to make sure, going back to my point about the three most important things to you, so is he meeting these things that you need? Or even if it's not the three most important, is he meeting some specific requirement that you have in your life? I'll give you a really quick example. I have somebody that... Um, is dating a woman, and this is this is a guy with a challenge, right? So he really, really wants to have children, mm -hmm. but the woman can't have children. So they got married, and now he's upset that the woman can't have children. Right. 
he knew that from the beginning, right? Oh, he, he already wanted, knew. He already knew. Okay. But he wanted to force the issue, so you have to take right <laughs> crazy. Yes, I, women I know. do it too, though. I mean, yeah. so yeah. So that that's an extreme <laughs> example, but yes. that's that's part of that separating the emotion from what I really want out of my life. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I would say the same. My 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 thing is people being very honest with their with themselves. Going go into really look at yourself and evaluate who you are. If you at this point in my life, I don't want any children. So I don't need I don't even really entertain women that say that they want children. We could be friends. Do you know a, you know what a woman's response with that to be would be is that you know but I'm gonna be so fine that he can't resist. I mean so a lot of times no, they will right. they will dismiss everything you just said like the and, man you said and, he and, got married. And that's what and that's one of the challenges in especially with men to women. Men have this, well, she can't do no more than I let her. A lot of times we get into relationships and then, okay. I'm going to cut you off because okay. we got to go right. Okay. We're gonna, <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can share. I'm sorry, I forgot that you did this. <clears throat> this is 30 problem. seconds. That's what's, okay. So, so I try to share it, but you know I can't share on your phone. <coughs> I can't post something. Wait, so wait, wait on my wait, wait on that. So how do you how do you usually um, share the the hot HD stream? Um. So much technology. I'm sorry. I, I, I say that again. How, how do you usually share the HD stream? Oh, I go to the Sensation Station page. Facebook page and just hit share from there. You do because I try to put it on your page. You won't let me do it. I try to put it on Pamela Antoinette and said I can't share. So you have um, it's on the Sensation Station page right now. Uh -huh. Well, I could do that from the computer. That's usually how I do it. Okay. Yeah, it would allow me to share it to your page. Oh, got it. Probably because I have a. Go to Academy so sorry, of Creative Coaching. Okay, I'll try to do it from here. Okay. What were we talking about? Well, we're talking about emotional intelligence and the. Um, oh, I was saying things that people need to be honest with themselves. Right. 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 You open form until five too. Oh, open what? Open form, so all talk. Oh, okay, got until it. Until five minutes too, then we come with um, love notes. Okay. Stop sign. Uh, let me show you this. Street. 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 How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptext.rex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. What else? Do you feel like you've gotten a little bit So I feel like I've gotten a lot of people, but I haven't gotten any clients out of it yet. But I've gotten a lot of people that I haven't reached. I took a little bit of a hiatus from working on about to jump back into it. I thought. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert okay. on drama. All right, you guys, I see your comments. I'm going to respond to them, I promise. I'll do it right now. And then there's the drama you can skip. The drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or clothes. Applying free adult education classes may not be easy. Your diploma, and leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Council. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. Ooh, I feel like we're like dim lights, candles. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do this event in college called the Solistic Groove, and it was uh -oh. spoken word and poetry, and you know, my name is Dr. Love, and <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, let me, let me get focused here. Focused. Okay. So, <laughs> but we are talking about um, relationships, and we're looking at it from um, the standpoint of these gentlemen here who are um, 
just they're allowing me to pick their brains a little bit, and I really appreciate it. Um, and so we're right before um, I issued the balance challenge this week, is to, which is to look at your um, your emotional intelligence, and, and you know, are you using it intelligently? You know, <laughs> how are you using your emotions? And, um, and I appreciate you, Yolanda Allen. I see that you just posted um, the challenge about emotional intelligence. Thank you for listening and for checking us out and for sharing. Uh, we've got quite a few comments um, and feedback that we've um, been receiving on Facebook Live, so I appreciate all of you for, for listening. We're, we're definitely going to go ahead and talk about some of those as well. Um, did you have any, I know I cut you off right before the break. Were you? I'll probably be able to bring you back in. Okay. I'll probably be able to bring you back in with something else we'll talk about. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> well, one of the other um, the questions that I had was, um, you know, I know I talked about, you know, what makes it, um, you know, how do we know who to accept relationship advice from? And, uh, and I think Stefan did a really good job of explaining to us that, Everybody is not a relationship expert. Sometimes that title just kind of gets slapped onto people right. who talk about relationships. Um, I know that that's um, happened to me as well. Um, and, and I guess in a lot of ways, I may or may not be, but I, mm, I don't know. It, you know it, <laughs> I'm really careful about you know, what kind of titles I, I, I like to have attached to myself. Um, but with regards to other men, are there men out there talking to men, and, and do they listen the way that women listen? Because I know you all said that women tend to want to hear the advice from the man because it's like hearing a big brother. Or, is the same the case for men? So it's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear what you're going to say about this one because I, I know what my answer is. It, it's, it's definitely not at the rate at which women are gravitating towards it and, and wanting to listen. Do I get messages from men yes do i have men clients yes um i have two books for men i only have one for women but okay then what are swear. those books i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> one is called he who finds a wife ah. and the first one i ever wrote was how to get a woman to have sex with you if you're her husband ah, so okay. you know and i have heard of that one and i'm gonna be honest with you i could put all kinds of money behind advertising those books mm -hmm. they're barely gonna move uh-huh I put a little bit of money behind the book for women, and it sells like crazy. <laughs> so that shows you that, yes, there, there, there are some who listen, but not as much. But I'm going to say this. One of the reasons why they don't is because, and I know some women won't be happy hearing this, <laughs> they see too many women rewarding bad behavior. Oh, yeah. So for me to get you to behave properly, to embrace this better approach, to be this man that you should be, it's more difficult because you keep seeing all these bad boys, thugs, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. getting way more benefits. Yeah. So we have to understand how we contribute to the issue of men not listening or men not gravitating to that advice. Um, but it is out there. If you guys are retweeting, that would retweet that. Because <laughs> that is huge. No, no I, pers I personally think the reason why men don't really uh, gradu gravitate toward other people telling them how to be, uh, how, to, how to have success with women is because we have to practice. We practice our own, we practice every day. So every day we go out and we see a woman, mm -hmm. we make, if, if we like her, we'll talk to her. Mm -hmm. Usually women don't practice how to start relationships with men, blah, 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 blah. Men have to be, the, men are the initiators. So you tell, I'm telling you what, I'll tell him what works for me. He won't tell me what works for me. Mm -hmm. So if if I can say, hey, little mama, if that works for me, if I found out <laughs> that that works for me, get, hey, he, can tell, he can tell me that, uh -huh. you know, you shouldn't say, hey, little mama. You know, you should say, hi, hi, how are you? My name is Kevin. That don't work for me, bro. Uh -huh. Where I hang out at is, hey, little mama, what's up? Right. So, <laughs> and, and I, right. <laughs> and so <laughs> since that's what I practice, mm -hmm. that becomes part of me and how I interact with women, okay. positively or negatively. That's so interesting because so what I'm hearing you all say is that what 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 men are doing is working for them. They're getting the end goal, what they want to get, whatever that end goal is. For us women, not necessarily the case because we have this end goal and our strategies are accepting some of the bad behavior and we're not getting out of that bad behavior what we would want in a relationship. So why continue to accept the bad behavior? Yeah, not getting what you want. That's an excellent question, and ladies. What, <laughs> right, right, ladies. <laughs> and so when I coach men, and I bet Stefan probably experiences this as well, 
men have a harder time gravitating towards what we're saying because, like you said, women show the bad behavior. But I even get this in marriages, right, where the, where the men are they're pushing back because they've been getting what they've wanted for four, five, ten years. They've mm -hmm. been getting whatever it is they need, and now all of a sudden it's a problem because it's come to it's come to a boil in the woman's mind and in the relationship. And now it's hard for me to talk to a man or even to get him to say, "Hey, I'm capable of making a change or doing something different," because she's been catering to me all this time. Hmm. So there's a question for your listeners. Yeah. Why do why continue the bad behavior? Why continue to accept the bad behavior, looking for a different result? What have you all seen in terms of why women do that? Why you know, I'm sure you've had these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, number one, the first thing is a lack of healing. That's the bottom line, mm -hmm. and that lack of healing then stems and creates all kinds of other issues. So. They're not leaving because they've been abandoned and they don't, you know, they have abandonment issues. They're not leaving because low self-esteem created by other dysfunctional relationships they've experienced or childhood or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sexual abuse. I mean, you name it. There's yeah. all kinds of things they're holding on to and that emotional baggage, that damage makes it hard for them to be emotionally healthy. Well, it does not allow them, period, to be emotionally healthy, and it hinders them from the emotional intelligence we talked about earlier. Right. It blinds them from being able to see things correctly. So it really all stems from a lack of healing because there is no emotionally healthy person who continues to reward or accept bad behavior. It does not happen. Anyone who's in a better space is going to see it, right. nip it in the bud right away, end the situation. Yes, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> no, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. My mind is racing um, because I'm thinking <laughs> that there, you know, women are um, struggling, um, and they, they've got the baggage, and, and and the men that they're dating do as well. And so you've got this clash of pain <laughs> that comes together, and um, and nobody seems to win in that kind of a situation. And and so I. I always come from the standpoint, I want to see healing happen on both sides. Um, you know, so if, if the women are coming for this kind of healing and the men are not, it just it just makes me wonder, well, you know, can it just be so one-sided? Um, think about that. Well, Where that's what I was going to say. When we come back, I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm not <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't forget. Remember that. Okay. Uh, and after we come back, we're going to be looking at a love note. Okay, let's not forget oh this one. <laughs> I was, oh, I was waiting for step. I was like, okay, I don't want to jump on it. It's not the needs of men and the needs of women. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I can't say with confidence yet. Oh, and just so you know, they hear you on the brakes. So. Oh, what's up? <laughs> just, okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. Why? <laughs> just. Yeah. Did he just say that? <laughs> right. <laughs> there was a time we had the audio plugged into there so they couldn't hear us and I could talk off my mess during the break, but I mean, it's... Hey, y'all. <laughs> what questions do you guys have? Yeah, you know what? They've got a bunch, and so I'm pulling, I'm going to pull it up right now. Um, and I have a question for you guys, right? So why do you guys continue to accept bad behavior if you're not getting the results? that you're looking for. Yeah. Place that in the comments. Do y'all hear that? Boom. <laughs> I got that. I got that. I'm going to already know. I know you do. This is I don't the, know if they know, though. This is the view from that camera. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, well, they can see. Yeah. So this one is just, he called behind the scenes one. But this is the one that's going to be shared broadly. And it's coming from the station. The Academy of Creative Coaching oh. is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make Look, a positive change out. in I, I apologize. Your <laughs> 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 the curse word is on your page. The accent is on your page. Hey, <laughs> we, need, we need some honest truth 30, here. Minute, I'm 30 seconds here. Uh, did you get that? Did you get those those questions? I'm pulling up right now. Okay. Social change. See, there we go. They are. Okay. 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 Okay.
camera's on you. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. So today's love note is based on a conversation that I've had, um, you know, with a um, gentleman who's actually struggling with heartbreak. And so I'm hoping that since I have three gentlemen here, uh, that you all can maybe help this man out. Um, his question is, he wants to get back out into the dating world. He's, but, um, and so, you know, he's tried, he's dated, you know, here and there, but he's clearly still struggling with the heartbreak of the last situation. It was um, a situation in which he was blindsided. He didn't expect that it was gonna end. He found out that she was with somebody else. Um, and he said that, you know, he, there are certain times where he struggles more than others. Um, you know, he just can't. And one of the things I talk about in a class that I have is complicated grief, you know, where you're just constantly thinking about it over and over and over again, and you can't let it go. Um, and so he's wondering what can he do to move on without being bitter, without harboring a lack of trust against other women that he meets in the future. I'll go ahead. Okay. I'll let you answer that. I'll go into one spot. Uh, so, you know, one one thing is he, he needs to heal, all right? And in healing, um, he needs to get things off his chest. You know, I'm a big proponent of getting my clients to write letters, mm -hmm. just getting everything out of their system because you can't keep holding on to all these emotions, all these feelings, and think it's just going to go away. You're right. just moving on the surface, but deep within it's still lingering there so he's going to need to do stuff like get it off his chest he's going to need to do stuff like forgiveness not just forgiving her because i guarantee you there's a part of him that's beating himself up i'm sure and and that's what's really making it more difficult for him to move forward so yeah. he's got to forgive himself and understand we all make mistakes we've all been in situations that weren't best for us so we didn't get out of there as soon as we should have it happens, and you know, the key is not to dwell on your mistake, but to learn from it and grow so that you can have a better situation next time. Right. And you know, also, there's, there's so much that has to be discussed when you're dealing with someone who's dealing with heartbreak. However, in general, I would say, recognize that a lot of times a breakup is a blessing in disguise. And you weren't gonna leave that the relationship. And I guarantee, as much as he didn't think she, you know, it was gonna end, it wasn't healthy. It, it wasn't this happy, great relationship and all of a sudden she all walked away. No, 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 no. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. No. So, he, she, it, 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 she did you a favor. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or, God, or the way I look at it, God did you a favor. Mm -hmm. So, you got to embrace that and understand, okay, here's your opportunity to get what's better for you in your life. And it, and it starts with healing and growing and just getting on a positive mindset, positive track. And that requires some practice as well. Practice is key. I mean, just like, you know, I, I, I'm big on the gym, I go work out. And for me, even when you don't feel like it, you just have to get in the practice of going through the motions of walking yourself to the freaking gym <laughs> and getting on whatever machine or whatever it is you do. You just have to, it, it just has to be something you practice. You do it repetitively. And that's Absolutely. Cool. So. Well, just to, just to tie off of Stefan's point. Um, I think he also needs to, and kind of what you said as well, Dr. Pam, he needs to physically get away, right? Because you can sit in the house and mope, mm -hmm. and you can be so caught up in everything that's going on that this is all you think about. You right. just dwell on it all day long, right? So if you're working on changing your mindset, some of those things need to be physical. So it may be going to the gym, it may be doing some other hobby that he likes to do, it may be finding... Um, some other friends to hang out with. It doesn't have to be dating. I'm not saying go jump back into the dating pool. Mm -hmm. But something to keep your mind from just straying back to this over and over and over again. And the farther you get away from it, over time, you'll find, as Stefan said, she did him a favor. Right. And you'll appreciate that she did him a favor. And as I, I think I mentioned maybe in our class that God's, God's, that rejection is God's protection oftentimes. Absolutely. And this class you're referring to, by the way, <laughs> I have a life classes going on right now. Um, life classes is life classes. We focus rebuilding and reloving in action. Um, so anybody who's interested in that, just check out um, Dr. Pamela Antoinette's um, Facebook page, and it, it'll all be there. But yeah. And, and one thing I want to throw in real quick, because I think we overlook this as a society, is your health can impact your ability to handle things emotionally. Oh, so you, when you're going through something, the worst thing you could do is let yourself go oh. as far as your diet, your sleep, all these things. So if you want to help yourself, then eat right, mm. exercise, get enough sleep, put yourself on a good schedule, check if you're deficient. Listen, a lot of us are deficient in vitamin D. Mm. 
And that stuff makes a difference. Yeah. I took a vitamin D supplement, almost changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, like, we don't check those things, That's but true. they can really impact can, our can. daily lives, our mood. And our ability to handle what life throws at us. Right. Oh, that's huge. And, and and you know what? A beautiful side effect of taking care of your life and your health is that you get fine. And you don't even realize it because, <laughs> you know, if your focus is on your health, you get fine by accident. Uh -huh. So, you know, take care of yourself. That's big. I like that. Period. Anybody else have anything to add? No, so, so. so I, the other thing, though, is um, I, I lost my train of, I have like a set of questions that I was going to ask um, uh, with this particular segment, but you guys keep taking me in such great directions. I'm just like, forget the questions. I'm just going <laughs> with what you say. But um, we have some um, uh, feedback that I really want to share here um, from Facebook. Um, one question that we have, well, before we get to the question, I'll read the comments. I think giving advice can come from two different places in somebody's mind. Um, what's the right way to handle things or what should I do um, logically or what should I what do I want to do emotionally so they look at it from the standpoint of from emotion I'll say that again from an emotional standpoint what is it that you want to do what, do you, what is it that you feel like you want to do versus what should you do and so um, so sometimes people just want to hear about what they want and not necessarily about the logic you know behind it and and I have to say in all fairness sometimes it's okay to have those conversations that are emotion laden. Like I just need to vent. I just need to let it out. I just need to get all of this mess that's inside of me out. And then and, and now let's let's come up with some logical solutions. But we can't deny what we're feeling. If we have it in us, we need to deal with it somehow. You looked at me funny. Right. <laughs> but we're going to break. I but was going to say because feel, feelings are something else. Feelings are something else. Are something else. I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you evaluate, evaluate elaborate on that yes. when we come back. <laughs> That's another. I, got that right. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. It's just it's hard to. Oh, uh, we are right back. Okay, great. What are your last names again? Levels here. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, you know, he said, Alicia, <laughs> this is Dr. Dr. Pamela, and we are live, back with the live exchange. And I, I have Stefan, say it. Labossier. Yes, St Stefan Labossier. Oh, I love how he says it. <laughs> and then we have, <laughs> and then um, we have Jay Hurt, and we have Kevin Harvey. Harley. Harvey. Harley. 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 Like Sorry. a motorcycle. I'm going to everybody's names Harley. today. My goodness. And they, they yeah, don't are. Don't get mixed up with Steve Harley. Don't do that. <laughs> she has Steve Harley cousin on the show. Steve Harley cousin. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are out here talking about relationships and letting men have their say. And it's funny because I'm not really letting them have their say. They're going to have their say whether I like it or not. Um, <laughs> but um, great conversation. Great insight. And so um, one of the last things that I said, and, and I love watching body language. Um, one of the last things I said is that sometimes we have to have those conversations that are based on how we feel and our feelings um, so that we can get to the next place. But as soon as I said the word feelings, Kevin was like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, let's look on his face. What do you mean? <laughs> no, but I, I say that to say because on another point that we were, we were talking about, um, this, this answer would have, um, would have helped, would have helped out. I think as men, we don't, we know it, but we but we don't really know it in a way where we can use it when we practice it. A woman's greatest need is to feel loved and feel secure, whether that's financially or just emotionally. Feel so it's a with her a lot of things are about feeling. Well, mine is physical touch. Yes, that's, that's okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, and so and so I say number one need because anytime you're having a problem with a woman. It's usually because of she doesn't feel secure with you, mm -hmm. either financially or she doesn't feel secure with you emotionally. Security is important, yeah. So, so just like for a man, his greatest need is to be respected. Mm -hmm. That's the, really the time when you're gonna, he's going to feel you're being disrespectful of him is really the time when you're going to have problems with him. So I have a question. In today's society where everybody is trying to neutralize you know, gender roles and all of that, you know, <laughs> Do we do those things still apply? Do, do do men still want to be you know is respect still the top thing for men and and emotion the top thing for women and you know is or or how the roles change with our society? So okay, <laughs> I was thinking I, something different. Right? I hate <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I hate and despise the the way people are trying to tear apart the gender roles, mm -hmm. and because I understand if you don't want to keep people in a certain boxes and say well the man has to be this the woman has to be this. But you have to look at it deeper and understand what actually works. So let's look at a simple example of a woman being the leader 
and the man falling for her in the relationship. All right? In the long run, she will grow tired of that leadership role. Yes. <laughs> she will lose respect for that man. She will not be happy in that position. Mm -hmm. That man will start to become aggravated with feeling like he's, he's not being a man in this relationship. Oh, right. He's being disrespected. So if you can genuinely make it work, okay, more power to you. Mm -hmm. But nine times out of ten, it does not work. And the desire to come out of these boxes is due to emotional trauma. It's due to not trusting the other gender in certain ways. It's due to all these other issues rather than an actual problem with the roles itself. And to add to that, roles are important in any function of two or more people, period. If right. you want great success, you gotta have roles. Mm -hmm. A company, a sports team, every, when people know their role, that's mm -hmm. when they do gr yeah, big things together. So mm -hmm. you can't eliminate that. And right. so once you realize we need roles, then it makes sense to understand what roles are strongest for each gender. Mm -hmm. And typically, whether it be the woman being the nurturer and the man being the leader, that's what's going to work. Because you never hear a man complaining about being the leader of the relationship. Right. But he will complain about being the one that's being led. All right? Yeah. And you won't, com <laughs> you won't hear a woman complaining about a man leading her if she feels like he loves her, he respects her, he values her. Those are the things that were missing back in the days which caused the revolution, so to speak, mm. all right? But if men were valuing and respecting their wives, we would have never saw the gender roles be a problem. Woo, preach, Can preach. Stefan go ahead and drop his mic? <laughs> 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 drop the mic. <laughs> all right, uh, we're going to pick up the mic, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> I Listen to, on SSA. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, I'm passionate about the I see. Yeah. Listen to SSA. Preach, Stefan. Who said that? Uh, someone watching Asian. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. That is so true. All right, so we're coming back straight into um, uh, trending topics. Trending topics. One of the things that, oh, shoot, I'm not ready for this. I don't have it up anymore. <sighs> Pull it up real quick. It said, pass your offering basket. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plate. Can you hear it? Turn you into a pastor today. <laughs> That's real. Um, yeah, that's one of the things that um, I think we don't want to talk about a lot. It's just like, I just need to be a little more Exactly. Yeah. The next year, that ends up being our year. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, but that challenge, that challenge is, is that you won't be a girl when you want to be. That's for some women, yes. That is no, but I mean, going back into yeah. you were talking about being a hustler. Right, so right. Hustlers ain't really you don't know how to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a hustler is a go-getter, is a right. leader. So, so now someone. how do you change that when you set your life up on hustling? Yeah. When you set your life up as a hustler, right. enough, you can make a dollar out of 15 cents. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now how do you... Put a man in your life and now That's make hard. that make that balance that That's Stefan was really talking about. Tough. How do you have that balance in your life? She's That's become so really independent, it's hard for her to bring someone else into her life. What what else does a man have to add? Well, unless you run it the way she says. Well, and, uh, and no yeah. no man wanna run your life no. the way he's the way you say. Gosh, you guys oh my god, you're striking a chord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back to the live exchange. Um so trending topics. Um uh, I think it's an interesting and, and really kind of bold, but um, Morning Show, uh, Morning Joe, okay. um, has blacklisted Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, alternative and, facts. Right? Uh, alternative facts. Well, and they're saying for that very reason, because a lot of the stuff that she says is just so questionable and it doesn't have merit. And and you know, I think honestly, um, it. It is the role of, I was a journalism major, um, and I think that the journalists do need to take back, you know, the platform and, and say, you know what, this is not this is integrity, this news is not in, given in integrity, and I think that um, that is what's happened here with, with um, um, Morning Joe. So this is coming from the Washington Post, and um, they're saying that um, they're refusing to let her on, and that it wasn't um, even the hardest thing that they had to do. So it was just kind <laughs> the of like, decision they had no, to make. no, it wasn't hard at all. And um, so the quote here says, we know for a fact that she tries to book herself on this show. Um, I won't do it because I don't believe in fake news or information that is not true. And that is every time I've ever seen her on television, something's askew, off, or incorrect. So what I'd love to see is for, from a journalistic standpoint, I'd love to see Fox News follow suit. 
And the reason I say that is, so we know that there is a, um, a bit of a political overtone to Fox News and a little bit of a political overtone to MSNBC. But by the same token, they are supposed to be journalistic organizations. So if you know the woman is coming on just blatantly lying, which is what she's doing, why entertain that? And I think if, if journalists as a whole do that, then you cut you cut some of that that um, that experience out, right? So we we know with politics, you've always gotten spin. Mm -hmm. So there's always been spin. Matter of fact, there there's a show called the Spin Room. Yes. So you get spin, but what she's doing is not spin. What she's doing is spin. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. What she's doing is not spin. It's just straight up lying. So what I hear you saying <laughs> <laughs> is like women who accept whatever men bring their way. <laughs> they are then validating and uh, you know this type of behavior. Absolutely. In the same sense, according to what you're saying, Fox News is in the same way validating and this CNN. type of and CNN and NBC and, and NBC, and NBC all of them because are they're validating allowing that to happen. By allowing right. to happen. So for them, I'm wondering, is there a catch twenty two in that? Well, this is the the um, we're talking about the, the the executive office here. We're talking about the president, whereas it's not just some you know, guy off the street, well, we all have our opinions about that. What's but. The, what would be the, uh, I guess my question is, what would be the catch-22? Because if I see that there are three million people on the White House lawn for Obama's inauguration, and I see that there are a million and a half people on the White House lawn for Trump's inauguration, and you come back and tell me that, I'm, that I don't see that, <laughs> but the whole world sees that, the whole world that. then you're lying. Yeah, and, it's, and it's the responsibility of the journalist to right. tell the truth, to show us what, what is really going on in the world. But right. you know, I think a lot of us have lost trust in, in media because... I think because of, because of the internet. I think because of people can go out there and put whatever they want to put out, put out there, mm -hmm. and the news media is still trying to connect with those folks because as, as different people, we all of us have opinions. Mm -hmm. The internet has made it so the person that didn't used to get heard, now he can be heard being on the internet. And in be, some ways, being that's on been Facebook great and, with regards to social but, justice issues, and now we can show. But in other ways... But in politics, <laughs> right. It's when, a double -edged sword. And then when a lot of your constituency that you want to get behind you mm -hmm. are those people who think whatever they say is the truth, as long as if I said it, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Then, how can you? It's going to come back and bite you in the butt. It just hasn't done it in a major way yet. Right. It's starting well, to bite her in the butt because people don't want her on the show. <laughs> right. Right. Well, you know, maybe it'll. I I I, don't, I kind of have a feeling it's not going to make them say, "Well, we need to we need to put our information out correctly." I'm talking about the you know her and her team. Right. I, I think what's going to happen is we'll start our own network. Then you know, but. White House, yes. White House News. White House News. <laughs> God. Um, <laughs> so, I, but I have to come back to what we were talking about during the break. And yes, I'm doing an, an extreme pivot. Like, we're just switching gears. Um, during the break, and, and for those of you who are on my Facebook Live, you, you probably heard some of this conversation. Um, but uh, Kevin was saying that, you know, well, I first said, you know, I have conversations with my girlfriends and we say, you know what? I just want to be the girl. I just want to be the girl. I don't want to have to do all this, you know, so this is in response to the whole role thing and, and how we don't want to have to take charge of the relationship. And Kevin said, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> you know. Right, because I think, and, and I have something that we were talking about. We are talking about dating models. I'm, I'm, I think we're at, we're at a transition stage where women are holding on to the old dating model, and mm -hmm. I would say that would be anywhere from 1930 to maybe 1970. Uh, then how dating started to change once women, women's live and, and those different questions about roles and, and, and what people are supposed to do and be responsible for right. in our interactions with each other started to change. So it's hard for me to even think and fathom in my mind that you want me to date you like it's 1950, but we're in 2017. So, and I say that to say, so that goes, <laughs> so that goes, that goes along with your 2017, I mean, excuse me, excuse me, you're, uh, you're saying you just want to be a woman, but you just want to be a woman when you want to be one. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and, I say, and I say that because we were talking earlier in yeah. the break about uh, the, the, new, the new woman being a hustler, being, being one that has multiple things she's holding down and doing different, so... If you don't have balance and realistic balance that I'm satisfied inside of your 
inside of your life mm -hmm. as well as you being satisfied with me inside of your life. Now, are you expecting me to help you juggle your life that you made up that I don't get to say nothing <laughs> about? The balls we juggling are 100 pounds a piece. Well, so here's my thing is, are we, I, I don't know if it's possible that, and you know, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but, but to stay in the same role forever and always, you know, so, right. so to say, I want to be a girl, it feels good to be a girl, blah, blah, blah. We can't always just be the girl, you know, because there are times, for example, a man, if we flip it, mm -hmm. can't always just be all, you know, there's times where a man has to be vulnerable. In a, within the context mm -hmm. of a relationship. There's mm -hmm. a time where, you know, so you can't always be, you know, and so I think that there's, I don't know if it's realistic to say that you can always just be one role the whole entire time that you're in a relationship. So, yeah, we want to be the girl sometimes, sometimes we don't want to be, but that's because sometimes we can't be. Sometimes there's times when our man is down and he needs us to step it up and do some things. Right. And I'm always talking about more of the dating roles. We know in personal life mm -hmm. there's going to be a time where, I'm, I might be not be as emotionally strong as you may be in that in that time. So it would be where you, where you kind of take over and cover me, and we and we move and we do what we do. When I move, uh, you move. Right. 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 Just right. like that. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> but no, we do have to. Well, we got to go to break, and uh, when we come back. We're gonna uh, continue this conversation. And that's what and that's what I know. Is I see us moving moving separately. Yeah. We're trying to against each other. Yeah, we're moving against each other instead of moving. Yeah, when I, I need you to do this, you're doing that. So it's a four forty-five. You guys are. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because usually when I say, when we say stuff like that, women go to the far extreme of what I'm saying, and sometimes when men say stuff, women go to the far extreme of. Right, right. I don't mean that there's never time for you to be a hustler. Oh, oh yeah, you need to make this money. Yeah. <laughs> and if that's how you make your money, being a boss, do your thing. But, if but inside of our relationship, right. Right. you're saying you want you want to set up. <laughs> Are you saying you want to set up? That might not be a possible dynamic. I think. Just when we come back, we come back to the research panel. Okay. Right? okay. Um, what did we say? You said not true as in what, Penny? Can you elaborate, Penny? Yes. <laughs> now, and again, as Stefan said, there, there are there are nuggets. I mean, there are little pockets of relationships that aren't really, 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 uh, that are far out there where the man is really laid back and let you do whatever and say whatever and be whatever. And it works for y'all too. Then y'all do y'all thing. Yeah. So I, yes, so nothing, nothing, is 100%, nothing is one hundred percent. I was gonna say, who does that work? For? Yeah. No, nothing is one hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. Once you, if, if if it works for you and your man, but you work. know what? And, and I say that you know, if it works for you, do it. But it doesn't really work. Again, in the long run, it doesn't work in the long run. That woman will get tired of it. Because you're gonna have, because you're gonna have issues with it. Yeah. And that's part of what I was saying. Part of people developing themselves when you say your development segment, mm -hmm. you gotta be honest with yourself. I had, I had a female friend of mine, she was married, and he, he was more my friend than she was before they got married. But she was like, I'm down. They were having some money issues, and he, uh, she said, I don't care if we lose the house, I have to move into an apartment after what's name. And he was like, Coming back okay. from research, she didn't really believe that. <laughs> And she elaborated, I see. Okay. <laughs> you want to push this button? Yes, please. Dismiss or? Um, oh, okay. We are talking okay. the science. And um, I th so I had another thing that I was going to talk about, but I really wanted to, yeah, I'm all off the cuff today, but um, I really wanted to talk about post-traumatic growth. We've talked about it on a couple of other shows, but I think it's important because um, we've talked, we've brought up past relationships and mm -hmm. how um, if we're trying to heal from those past relationships, um, how important that is before we move forward into other relationships. And so there is um, a concept that's actually called post um traumatic relationship disorder and so this is there's research on it and, and it's just it's just like it sounds you know you've had a negative experience in previous relationships um, it may not even be that the relationship itself was bad but maybe the break was so dramatic that it, it's had an impact on you um, and so there are a lot of people in my opinion walking around with, with that <laughs> um, and and so it impacts you in the way of um, you, you're fearful of getting into new situations. You, you know, it's just like with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, you relive 
those traumatic experiences over and over again and you reapply them to your current situation even if that current situation is not a traumatic one. So you can be at a mall and, and you can hear, you know, something fall on the floor and you may think that it's you know, some, some violence that's about to erupt, depending on what kind of trauma you experience. In the same sense, post-traumatic relationship disorder, you apply those traumatic experiences that happened in the past to your current re relationship, even though it may not be a traumatic situation. And so post-traumatic growth is how do you grow from a traumatic situation? A lot of people don't are not familiar with the whole concept of post-traumatic growth, but it, it basically means that I've experienced a traumatic situation, but I'm going to rise above and become better than I was when I exited that last traumatic situation. And, and I think that that's an important goal that we should have um, when moving in and out and moving from one relationship to the next, is making sure that growth has actually occurred. I agree. Definitely. Uh, no question about it. So if you, if you haven't grown, you're going to do those same things over and over again, and you're not going to see any change. You're not going to be able to move forward. Um, I remember that, that you and I talked about post-traumatic growth a, a couple of days ago, and one of the things that I'm wondering, I'm going to I'm going to ask you. So, so how are there? Is there a certain set of skills or a certain set of things that you want to look for when you're trying to when you know you've been through this traumatic relationship and you're looking, especially ladies, and you're looking to do something different and you don't have the you don't have the access to a coach or a therapist. Mm -hmm. But you, but you want to make some changes. What are your thoughts? On that? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I think that, and, and one of the things that I write about in my book is who you have yourself around. And so it's important that you, you surround yourself with people who are voices of experience. That's one of them. I'm probably not going to be able to say them off, off the cuff. <laughs> uh, but voices of experience. Um, people who are willing to tell you about their experiences. Not people who have had their experience and they're in a rotten place in their life. Somebody who's had their experience and they've been able to evolve and grow in their own lives. Um, the, and I can't remember the name of it, but the people who um, will tell you the truth, they'll tell you like it is, they'll tell you about it yourself. Um, life processors is what I called it, the life processors. And they'll, they'll challenge you to think about who you are and where you are in life. Um, and then also the cheerleader. This is the emotional one. This is the person who's willing to tell you, girl, you're fine. Or you know what, you're awesome. Or you're beautiful. You need that, but you, don't, you, you can't have just that. If you have a bunch of cheerleaders in your life, then you're not going to get very far. Um, if you have a lot of, a lot of pro life processes in your life, you're going to be stressed out all the time. Because <laughs> they're going to make you ask all the right questions. Yeah. So you need a combination, in my opinion, of, of all of those things. So, so I think one of the most important, and this is just one element, is, is who you have and making sure that you build. Sometimes you have to build a network of these people. When I went through my divorce, I was living in Wisconsin. I didn't have any close friends there. I grew up in California. So I had to literally create a network of people, um, which, uh, and, and I did that by, I was in church, I was involved in different church things. I got on meetup.com and I found groups of writers or people who are like-minded. Um, so I was very intentional about making sure I had, I could build a network of people that were around me. Absolutely. So I see that it's almost 1230 and I know that Stefan has to leave soon, so I want to make sure that we give him a chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, you know, he did talk about um, the, the books that he's written, but I, I would love to hear if there's anything um, else that you would like to, you know, share or impart for the audience. Um, I guess just piggybacking off the post-traumatic uh, relationship issue, just, uh, again, we all need to heal. Mm -hmm. We all need to heal from not just past relationships as far as romantic relationships, but relationships with our siblings, with our parents, right. um, anything that has created a fear, a hurt, a damage in our life. And so like I always tell people, you know, you make a list, you write who hurt me, and you start listing mm -hmm. all the people that came to you and comes to mind. I don't care how little it is. If it comes to mind, it's significant. And you got to start working through all those different issues because at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to have a healthy relationship if you skip that part. And you may find yourself in a relationship, but you will find yourself in a dysfunctional one and you will be incapable, especially for women, to embrace the guy who's truly best for you because he will scare you the most, mm -hmm. all right? That you will pick what I call the safe picks, all right? For guys who That's true. You, you might, you might want to be with them, but you're not really into them like that. So you deal with them, and you try to make it work, and you tell everybody you love him and all this stuff. No, you don't. How many of you have done that? Go ahead and put some hearts up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're just picking what's comfortable. Uh -huh. And again, that just creates more issues because they will never be what you need them to be. 
Wow, that's really good. Um, yeah, I can't even argue. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really good. And and so one of the things that I and that I've been wanting to ask you is, um, you know, the where is my Boaz um, is, and that's had a lot of really positive, you know, response. Um, so should we all be looking for Boaz? Is Boaz the, the, the guy, the icon, the one that we should be all? <laughs> <laughs> well, just so you know, the only reason why I even use Boaz is because it was already a popular reference in the church. Yes as far as when speaking to single women. And so a lot of people, they'll hear Boaz, and they'll say, oh, a Boaz is dead, or Boaz is this. Look, I'm not talking about the actual <laughs> it's Boaz. It's not that literal. Yeah, okay. it's Got just it. to represent the man who God has for you, the man who's best for you. And yes, the, every woman should be waiting or be preparing for the man who is truly best for them. Mm -hmm. And if we focus more time on preparing and getting ready, rather than getting caught up in dead-end situations and nonsense that only creates damage in our lives, then we will be able to embrace that person when it comes. But the reality is that a lot of people meet that their Boaz. A lot of women meet Boaz at some point in their life, but they run from Boaz. They push Boaz away. They can't believe this is really Boaz. Wow. They will find all kinds of ways to sabotage the situation, whether they realize it or not. So you really have to be mindful of your mental and emotional state and hmm. truly being ready. We want love, but are you ready for love? Are you ready for a real relationship and commitment? If not, then it's never going to work. Wow. Well, well, we just had a question that came up, and, and uh, I think we have to go to break, but the question <laughs> is, is Boaz a unicorn? And can Boaz wear a name tag? I mean, can he just say, hello, Dr. Pam. I'm, I'm right. You know, no, I'm just <laughs> but, uh, but we have to go to break, and, uh, and so, I, I, gosh, I, this went so fast. <laughs> but if you all, you all can have questions or, you know, if you want to continue this conversation, um, you know, go ahead and post your questions to um, the Facebook Live page. I will make sure that Stefan has access to it if he wants to answer any of those questions, and, um, and uh, we'll be right back. But, can you go to my buddy's question? What she said. But can you? She so she also asked if Boaz is a unicorn, and she can hear you if you want to tell. Boaz is not a unicorn. Boaz <laughs> does exist. All right. <laughs> he exists. There might be three of them sitting around me right now. He's a Boaz. For, they're Boaz is for somebody. For somebody. <laughs> I'm, I'm married. So, yeah, so, so she somebody found her Boaz. That was what she said. So sometimes Boaz, yeah. Boaz is not a one, is one kind of one kind of dude. I mean, he got a couple of same boys, but he got a little variations. He had beards and <laughs> dreads and this and so. That's right. Boaz looks different for whoever whoever is for. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Awesome. Good to see y'all, Jim. I see you singing there. All right. I appreciate it. Oh, Jimmy, I wanted to take a picture. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Do we have a second to take a picture? Yeah. Anybody have one? Mine's in use. It's empowering. Anybody have one that wants to empower the world? Me, I should also be changed. I'm sorry. I'm in the world. Go to the academy. And Jay just changed it. Okay. Come in. Let's go. Let's go. Because as technology does it, I'm trying to do something real quick. But never really did win that championship. All right, come, come this way underneath her picture. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it was one of the biggest Yeah, just move that chair up. Okay. There you go. All right, I'll say the question when it comes Sunday. Question you want to ask in person. All right, Joe. Okay, thank you so much. All right, y'all. If you want to hear more, Sunday at the Cod Energy Center. Is it the Cod Energy Center? Um, they're doing, these guys plus four other people are going to be on a panel talking about all of this stuff. It is right here in Atlanta. If you're not in Atlanta, there's some cheap flights. <laughs> You can get down here. Um, hey, Yolanda. I see you saying hello to me as a Wisconsin I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm planning on being out in Wisconsin. You're right. You're going to bring the pillows over. You know, you get to put the uh, oh, oh, down. So it's okay for me to, to say step out of the way. Yes. Yes, we do need to step out of the way. Make a positive change in yourself. 
Oh, she said it was not true when you were talking about the role of women. Oh, oh, she elaborated. But there are there several questions? There's a lot. Right? Like a rapid fire. Yeah, we'll do that. She said women can be hustlers but want a man to lead in relationships. You're, clear, you're clarifying it off the air. I agree with your clarification. Okay. No, no. And again, that, the 100 percent thing when people hear, I don't know why we're hearing 100 percent. There's nothing that's 100 percent. Right. So to even throw that out there, like I'm saying, yes, you can be a hustler, but do you know how to take off your hustler hat when you come home? Right. And be this woman that you want to be, or are you dictating that how? So okay. That, so that's the problem. Coming back. Right. That's what I think we're trying to challenge. So open forum for six minutes. She said, what's after that? Is it balance challenge uh, after that? Then you have, um, uh, no, no, we did the research. Did we do, yeah, we did oh, the research. We did. We're doing um, um, balance challenge after that. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to try my best to get through all <laughs> It's like when I read uh, one, we spur a conversation off of that one. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and today we are talking relationships, and um, we, uh, we had... Um, Stefan Lavoisier. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. He says it so much more perfectly than I do. Um, and he just uh, he just exited the building, but he had great insight. So whatever you missed, you're gonna have to go back and check it out. Um, and then we also have um, Kevin Harvey. Harley. Harley. I don't know it's why like, you don't turn into Steve Harvey. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am not his cousin. And I should know Harley. I have a bald like, head, but I'm not his cousin. <laughs> So Harley, yes, Kevin like Harley, the motorcycle. yes, and, um, and we also have Jay Hurt, and they are sharing um, their insight as well. So we have got a whole lot of questions that I really want to try to get through here. Before you run through the questions, sure. can I say something real quick? So, so ladies, I know you, you heard a lot of great information from Stefan mm -hmm. today. Stefan will be at our event this coming up Sunday at Cobb Energy Center. It's called Having Our Say, Men Talking Real About Dating and Relationships. So Kevin will be there, um, myself, Dr. Carla Lindsay. Stefan, um, we also have Kenny Q, uh, life coach. Um, we have Dwayne and John, I believe is the other gentleman's last name. So we're going to have a really interesting conversation with a lot of single guys sharing their thoughts on dating and relationships. You're not single. Uh, you see I'm how sorry. you try to throw me You're not single. Don't no. make us call your wife. Don't make us call your wife. Babe, I forgot my ring today, but you know I love you. So, see, yeah, I got your back. Else, I got your back. Everybody else. And, uh, and Nasira, Nakisha, Michelle, um, celebrity matchmaker, will be hosting the show, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, awesome. Yeah, and Dr. Pamela will be in the room. I'm not going to be talking, though. I'm going to be sitting back and learning. So. That's what's yeah, so, um, so, so definitely come out for that. I will put a flyer yes. up, and so you all can see, you know, get the details. Love to see that. all of you there. Yes, 6 yes. 6 p.m. Cobb Energy Center. All right, all right. So next Sunday. Um, so, okay, so we've got questions. we got questions. So um, we have, well, and comments. So Yolanda Allen is saying it doesn't apply to a lazy man, but when you know he's the breadwinner and does everything in his power to take care of his home, um, you know, you should step up when times get hard, um, just considering the days that we're living in now. Um, and, and this is all in response to, uh, a lot of response to what Kevin was saying about a woman wants, you know, wants to be able to just have a man be, the man and step up and be a leader but then at the same time she wants to hustle and he's kind of like so what do you want to be you know um and so the responses are coming from that so penny is saying women can be hustlers but want a man to lead in relationships and um and the question she had asked you earlier um you had clarified for her but she was she wasn't sure you know what you were saying okay. <laughs> but she got right it. and, and got I, that's what i'm saying a lot of times <laughs> when we listen to people we listen we listen in absolutes yeah so yeah. None of what we're saying is 100% across the board for everybody. Right. If this doesn't pertain to you and, and you know that this is not your life and this is not how you are, then it's not you. Right, then it doesn't apply to you. It That's how I feel at Valentine's Day. It's like, well, it ain't, it ain't about me. I, I ain't got a Valentine's Day. <laughs> <so. laughs> 
Go ahead. 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 Go and their man didn't show up for Valentine's Day. Oh, didn't goodness. show up and show out for Valentine's Day. Well, that's why they're mad now because it's happened in the past. And, right. And they've had the post traumatic <laughs> relationship disorder. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, there you go. But um, so let me see. Um, we also have. Um, I think these group, this group of guests, need to come back. Great conversation. I agree. That's a formal. That's a formal invitation. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see. There's a lot. There's a lot here. Um, what do you think, coaches? or catalyst for healing can do to bring men to the table for this change? Um, I'll be glad to take that. So, so what can we do to bring men to the table? Um, three things come to mind. Number one, I mentioned it before, Stefan mentioned it before, ladies, change what you will accept. Stop mm -hmm. accepting bad behavior. Can you pose that question again that you asked? Why? Why do women accept bad behavior? Why? Yes, why do women accept bad behavior? So like, sit down, think about that, write that out maybe, and examine your own situation if you're having challenges in your situation and say, okay, I continue to accept this um, and I continue to get the same thing. Now, what if I do something different? Let's see if I get a different result. Or maybe that guy's not the right one for me. Maybe I go get another guy that's going to give me the result that I want. Well, but when we look at it from the grand scheme of things, if you don't tolerate that particular behavior from that guy, he'll just go to... Linda. He's I, not the one for you. Who, right, no, but what I'm saying is, I'm looking at the whole entire, like, the, the social landscape of dating, mm -hmm. so so then John goes over to Linda then, because Linda will totally accept it, and so I, I agree with the challenge that both you and Stefan have stated is, stop accepting it, as, you know, as a collective of women, right. hard, if we can come together and stop accepting these but, things. But it's hard, let me tell you, let me tell you why, what, why I've evaluated why I think it's hard for women to do that. And we're talking about a woman's greatest need is to feel loved and secure. Mm -hmm. If she's with a guy and they've been together a long time, at some point he's made her feel loved. She so that. she knows that he got it in there. Uh -huh. He just ain't giving it to me. <laughs> so yeah. when I go, so I need to do and put pressure and do whatever I need to do to get him back where he was, where he was loving me. Why are you telling us? So, 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 so <laughs> the other woman, she's the problem. If she wasn't mm -hmm. here, he'd be loving me like, he used to. Wow. If if he didn't have to work so hard, I mean, if he didn't have to, you know, if we had more money, so if he went out and got another job, well, he ain't going to see me that much anyway. But if he <laughs> if he go out and get another job and make our home life even happier, then I'll feel loved again. So I think, I, now that's my personal, uh, just evaluating, listening to people. So she wants to get back to where it was. When, so she don't like to throw that away because she knows it's possible. But so you're married, let's say you're married, and mm -hmm. you're in a situation in which the, the husband did show all this love in the beginning, mm -hmm. and at some point in the marriage, it, it stopped. So what does it look like not to tolerate that when you're married? I mean, you don't just up and divorce because of that, or, or well, do you? I mean, what, what does it look like in the context of a, of a marriage to say, you're not treating me the way that you treated me before, and, and I've said this over and over and over again, and it's not changing. So I think that's really where it's time to go in and put in the work, right? I think we throw away marriages way too fast. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, one of my one of my tenets in my book is to constantly work on your relationship slash marriage for it to thrive, right? So that means you may have to get down to the nuts and bolts and figure out, okay, so what are we doing differently, or what has changed? And sometimes that takes that counseling piece. But That's you're saying thing. we. So so my it's question is. Oh, it's oh, oh, but but no. But my question is, if you see uh, as a woman, let's let's say I see the need for change. Right. I've been begging this man, this husband of mine. Will you please right. love me the way you used to love me? Will you please go to counseling? No, no, no. You're tripping. You're overreacting. Right. You're over this. What's a woman to do? Please. No, he's, I know he's not going to advise cheating. No, I, no, I'm not going to advise cheating. <laughs> no, I'm not going to advise cheating. I think, okay, so, so that's I'm a tough scenario. That, right, that's a, that's a tough scenario, but the, but the one thing I would say is, in those scenarios, so I'm a Christian, so you know I'm going to say stay in the Word, right? Mm -hmm. but, but besides that, on the, on the, the self-development the, uh, self side, I think it's important to go work on ourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Even though we know 
he's not doing what he needs to do. He's not where he needs to be. Let's work on ourselves and let's make ourselves better because generally there's something in the relationship that we're deficient in as well, right? So if we're working on ourselves and we're staying where we need to be from a spiritual perspective, mm -hmm. sometimes that's all we can do as far as the other person is concerned, right? Right. So Indeed. that that's my thoughts on that. And, and I had a lot of friends, never been married before myself, um, but have a lot of friends and I'm able to kind of sit on the outside and look in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think it's the other person only, mm -hmm. and it's also them. Uh, in a lot of marriages, what I've seen, men aren't happy. Now, the women are happy because a lot of things have been satisfied. One, she wanted to get married. She checked that off. She wanted to have kids. She checked that off. She's got her house. She checked that off. So a lot of things, she's kind of satisfied. So if something comes in to rock the boat, she's going to be upset about it and get my house back the way it used to be. That's what I need to do. Now, is, one, your is your husband happy? One, one bullet point on top of what, what Kevin said. So often men are happy and we're not good communicators, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So we don't communicate it well, so it's hard to work with that. We're right. going to stop here, we'll never get to the rest of the Yes, right, right, right. <laughs> right, but we go into that, right? I know. We won't never get to that. Okay, well, well, before we get into any more of the questions, we're going to go into the balance challenge. Okay. My screen is going blank. Okay, so the balance challenge this week, if you were with us the first hour, then you probably heard it already, but this, the, the balance challenge is for you all to do a, um, an emotional intelligence check on yourself. <laughs> so I want you to think about um, the, the ways in which you use your emotions. Do you use your emotions in ways that are positive and beneficial, um, that are productive, or do you use your emotions in, in ways that are destructive? And yes, or manipulative, or you know, in, in negative ways, in ways that continue to hold you down um, rather than um, to, to propel you to the next phase or to the next thing that you need to be doing. Um, and so, and that takes a very honest conversation with yourself, a uh, very honest look at yourself, um, very honest conversation with many of the people in your life who love you and care about you. Maybe the two of you, let's see if you think of somebody else, um, the two of you can sit down and have a conversation about how the other expresses emotion and, and whether or not that is um, perceived as healthy or not. Um, and so, it, it, you know, again, not easy conversations to have, but important and necessary conversations because sometimes... Um, our emotions can save our lives, but our emotions can also destroy our lives. <laughs> yes, they can. Yes, they can. So, anything to add to that? What well, you got? Thirty seconds. The only, the only thing I the only thing I would just tie up, tie on to what you said is that we don't want our emotional intelligence to be counterproductive to what our ultimate goals are, to what our values are, to to what we're trying to build in our lives. So, just learn to keep your emotions in check and make them a part of how we move forward as a, some, as opposed to something that holds us back. Right, that's great. Okay, we'll be right back. My screen is not. I saw it like flash it. It's being stupid. This is what happens when you buy a cheap computer. I think it's probably, it might be your connection in here. There's a, mm -hmm. using the connection. That's using what's that's, 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 that's not what you should be doing. That's <laughs> okay, would you slam your phone like that? <laughs> no, it's the same <laughs> thing. Your phone is a laptop. I would slam my man like, no, I'm oh, see? See? <laughs> That's where we need that, that leadership. That, that right. man leadership. <laughs> ah, yeah, you need to take it. Uh, I think it's just something sucks. wrong with your connection. That goes from, it, from, from here to there. It's just something wrong with it. Mm. I just need the connection to be better. You need to call Nova. I need to go get me a Mac. Uh, that could be if you want to buy something else. Buying something new is not this always the answer. This was my no. That's that's what I learned with this. Buying my, something new is not always the answer. I have a answer. Mac and I needed something in between. Ooh, this okay. is a great analogy, but I need yeah. a little in between side piece to get See? me through. Yeah, I knew it's <laughs> taking you as far as this it, is my side piece. Your going. side piece has taken you as far yeah, as you can go. As far as I go, and then I gotta get some. <laughs> I gotta get the real deal. Okay. I need a. Go ahead and invest in the. Hey Mandy, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Yes, you're right. Or she exists. I'm so I'm a dog and I just got the table. Exactly. I don't feel like you answered the question either. All right. Why she put me on blast? Come on. Listen, sometimes. I'll answer. Listen, it's something. He's going to answer your question, Penny. It's just that sometimes he's a great boss. So let me tell you, when I was married, I could.
can get my ex to really take it serious. Like, he went, and he was just like, I'm here. 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 I'm gone now. You can take that off. Huh? Take that off. Please take that off. Oh, <laughs> welcome back to the live exchange. Um, I hear your sound over there on your phone, um, Mr. Uh, J. Hurt. Just, you know. <laughs> My bad. Um, it's okay. Help you out. It's okay. <laughs> um, but we are um, talking relationships and we're just addressing some of the questions. Um, one of the listeners pushed back a little bit on, on, on the question I asked, on Jay's response to the question I asked about how you get your spouse to the table. If you see there's a problem in the relationship, and you're trying and you want to get it fixed, you want to go to counseling, and this, this person, um, you know, whether it's male or female, does not want to go. Okay. What do you do? So, you didn't like my answer, Penny, and that's okay. <laughs> sure, I asked it, I thought we were better than that. So, I've, got a, I've got an answer for you. So, you can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do, right? It's just that simple. You can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do. So, the best you can do is to, it's, it's what I said before, it's to do the best you can with yourself and to prepare yourself as best you can and to try to do everything on your end the proper way because here's what happens a lot of times. Men don't communicate. We're terrible communicators, right? So sometimes there may be an issue on his end that you're doing and you don't even know it mm -hmm. because he's not telling you, he's not sharing, he's not doing those things. You may not be catering to his love language. You may be... You may not be respecting him in a way and he I'll wants say to be respected. And I'll from personal experience, I've asked, like, what is it? Is it me? Is it? No, it's not you. It's but, not you. But it, it's not you. It's me, right? But we don't, it's because we don't know how to really communicate because mm -hmm. a lot of times we didn't grow up with open communication with our parents. Mm -hmm. Guys just shut down and did what they were supposed to do as men, right? right? So it's really about, <laughs> it's really about doing the, the best you can and being the best you can, learning as much about him as possible, and then hopefully... As he opens up, as you as you see yourself change, you'll see him open up, and then you can change, and hopefully you can go to get that counseling. Right? It's not a perfect science. You can't you can't drag anybody kicking and screaming. And you know, as a as a coach and, and all the great things you do, even if you do drag somebody somebody kicking and screaming, it doesn't work anyway because they don't want to be there. Right. And that I I, I know I definitely have been uh, watching relationships. A lot of times, men avoid things. And women ignore them. So you might know your man cheating, but you ignore it. As a man, you know she got issues with something she's that she's too. doing. That could be that could be true too. That could be true too. But as a man, you could you're just avoiding having this conversation until you really got to have it. Mm -hmm. So if you're just not ready to tell her that because you 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 might think telling her what you really got to say to her. Mm -hmm. It's going to really blow this thing out of water where it's already rocky. So I'm avoiding doing that. So until, again, he can trust that how he feels or what he tells you is not going to destroy the whole situation and make it worse, right. sometimes that's just it. It may not that's be that he don't want to talk to you, but he may just not want his re his response to be held against him in a court of law. Right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, and I think it's an interesting point that you said that um, that women... Um, tend to ignore and men, what yes, did you say? Avoid. Avoid. Um, wow, I think there might be some merit to that. <laughs> because I, no, you know, and I just said that's what's from my view. It's not 100%. But, but I think, you know, that makes time. a lot of sense, um, you know, because I think, um, you know, a lot of the women who I know that are ignoring, they're ignoring and they're like, well, I'm going to go ahead and make myself happy. And, um, and, and they think that maybe over time things will improve, but it, it's not if you're just doing you. But how does that, in, okay, so with the, with the, Say with the example that you're giving, but maybe kind of sort of with the example that you're giving. So if a woman is going to make herself happy, then she's really not working on the relationship. Right. <coughs> Excuse right. me. She's just trying to placate herself until she thinks he comes around. And that usually only happens after, you know, trying and trying right. and trying, and he's ignoring or avoiding and avoiding. Then she's just like, well, what the heck? You know, and these are just in cases that I've seen. Well, just my, my, my last quick thought about it, because I know we're got to get to more questions. My last quick thought is, so generally, it takes years, months, years, whatever, to fix, to, to get to where we are. Right. It's going to take time to, to, fix to fix it. Right. It can so. take that long. And, and so in the meantime, does one stay in a situation that is unhealthy, that is diminishing who they are, 
that. It, so my, because I guess the that's a pointed question. <laughs> you already had the well, bad no, code word. Well, no, if you but put the reason bad I'm asking is because it still comes back to what do you do when you're with somebody who doesn't want to fix it? That's different from it being detrimental to you. Not because of, because of words you used before. But, but, but if you're, but if you're with just somebody, somebody who just doesn't want to fix it, that is detrimental. That, that, that basically every day speaks to, it, it's a way of communicating, at least this is how women receive it, um, but, but you're communicating to me that I'm not valuable enough to you to want to actually deal with this. And That's that, diminishing that, and, to live in that and, every day. And, and, it might, and it might mean usually when somebody doesn't want to fix something, that means they don't want it anymore. You see a lot of people don't know that about men. Some time men avoid it to not be the villain. So if you leave, I ain't the villain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I actually know somebody just like that. Right yeah, now. he, right. you just he waiting on you out. He trying to wait you out mm -hmm. till you get tired enough. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stay out all night tonight. See what she did. <laughs> you, I'm just saying, men men do that also. Yeah. Men will do that also. So it's a it's one of those things you have to be because you're gonna have to be comfortable with the decision that you make. Right. So you have to be. You can't try to make it and put it on him as in, okay, if you see that he's really and realistically not trying to improve it and you thought and you think he's gotten to the end of your rope and done everything you can, then you need to make a decision for you and be able to be a woman that made a decision for herself. Not that made a decision, but you're gonna call her well I w we still would be married if he would <laughs> no. It'd be like it didn't work. Uh -huh. I chose to move on. That's it. That's it's it. And the reason why I ask that is because this is a hard situation. I mean, I have my own set of ideas and strategies, but I really wanted to hear from a male perspective. So what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? Yes. Well, you know, so when you're kind of at a place where you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place, you, you're trying, you want to make this work, and it's not going anywhere, and it's really diminishing your livelihood. Um, you know, I agree, you don't jump straight to divorce. You know, there's there's certain steps that I think need to be taken. And first of all um, is really you've got to take care of yourself and, and now I get that you know if you're just doing you you're not doing the relationship but at some level you you have to take care of you if, if you're not being taken care of in the relationship it's so important that you do take care of you to the extent that, that you, you can but I also think that it's very important to communicate and to, to keep communicating no matter what yeah. even if your message isn't being heard even if you if they don't want to talk about it I, I you don't ever relent from from talking just keep going um, because eventually what that's going to do is that they're going to get fed up because they're going to think that you're complaining all the time or they're going to fix it and if they and, and so if they can't handle what it is you're saying that you need so you need um, somebody who's supportive and, and who's into what you're doing you know so for example I am um, I'm a writer and so when I was married uh, me and my ex had, you know, always we always went back and forth about. Um, he wouldn't read what I wrote. He was he wasn't, you know, he it, he just interested. yeah, he just wasn't he wasn't into it. Um, that was very important to me, you know, to be able to share this important piece of who I was with the person that I was with. It wasn't the deal breaker. No, I'm saying just, did he did he did he talk it down? Did he not talk to oh, you? Say hey, my my beautiful wife has written a book. Did he, did he try to get other people to read it? No. No, you there just was went no, yeah, but there was just, but, but it, well, there wasn't that encouragement that I would have okay. wanted to receive it within the context of a relationship. So again, that wasn't the deal breaker, but that's just an example of one of the things. Mm -hmm. Holding hands was, I, I, my love language is physical touch. Right. I really wanted to hold hands. That was something that you, 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 I'm not into that. I'm not into that. Um, and so, so again, not being loved in my love language. So what I had to do is I didn't stop talking about what it is I needed. And, and I, you know, I was always very, and I didn't do it to pick fights. I didn't do it, you know, to to get at. But I always reminded him, you know, uh, it would be really cool if we were holding hands right now. But let me ask you, Dr. Pam. So, did you before you were married? Did, um, did he did he read your writing? Did you hold hands? Did he cater to those things? No. But mm -hmm. no. So so I'm so now here I am, and a lot of us do this. Now we're married and we're in a situation in which some of these things didn't happen. And so what I had somebody tell me when I was when it was time to divorce, well, you went ahead and got in this relationship and you chose this, so you need to go ahead and suffer through it because um, that's what you chose. I don't agree with that. Right. We make bad decisions. Right. We enter into situations in which we saw the evidence and now we're here. But now we ha we're in it. Now here we are. We made a decision when we were 19, 20 years old. Now here we are 37. 
we've got to make a decision. You know, we've got to, we're in this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I get your point. So maybe, so maybe that's a, that's a whole other show that's on divorce it is and how you go to divorce. Yeah, because now we have to, we're done. We're, we're time's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a question for you. Though. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I throw one really quick thing? One on really quick thing. One really quick like thing. Like 10 seconds. 10 seconds. So <laughs> if you're, if you're in a situation, you're getting to know someone, learn as much about them as you can yes. because you want someone that is your optimal spouse, right? right? So right. it's not just the butterflies and all that fun stuff. Right. right. That's good. And he just <laughs> abrupt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Today. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. We can continue this conversation on Facebook Live. But thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back next week. And we're going to be talking actually about the professional life coaching. And, um, and maybe that, you know, some of us will creep into that as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Dr. Pamela. Check me out on the liveexchangeradio.com. I will post information about the event happening this Sunday at the Cobb Energy Center at 6 o'clock p.m. February 19th. February 19th. Peace out. <laughs> ah, so I was trying to go back. Fun. Like, 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 I know. Fun. Oh, we have to get out because we have to show now. Because um, that's the thing. Is, yeah, I definitely chose wrong. So now here I am. And, it, and, and it's hard. And it's hard. What do you, what do you, what do you want? What do you <laughs>